Hi, everybody. I'm Kari Norin Hoshal, and I'm talking to you from Sarasota, Florida. I relocated here uh, just at the end of July, and uh, my family lives here. It's wonderful to be down here. Also, my uh, fellow EAer Patricia Walsh lives in Sarasota, and hoping to get together with her sometime. Um, I uh, was studying with Kim Marie for um, most of the program and did some uh, studies with Maurice Fernandez as well. And I've been um, with the NCGR group in Baltimore uh, before moving here to Sarasota, Florida. In Baltimore, um, I was vice president at NCGR for about four or five years and helping with programming there. And I really appreciate the uh, really good job you're doing, uh, Linda. Um, you've got a lot of speakers, it's tremendous. So um, without further ado, I'm going to start my presentation on the astrology of the Mayan calendar. And um, I was talking with Jose just recently and he told me about something very interesting uh, that is happening in the fifth year of this Mayan fifth sun. Um, basically, um, we are coming into the first um, milestone of the uh, Mayan calendar, of the new Mayan calendar. And um, this should read Mayan sixth sun um, because the fifth one ended on December 21st. And I think many of us here were very aware of that when it was happening. And the next one began the very next day. Um, so Jose um, really clarified that for me. I thought that it would have begun that exact same day, but it was the next day. So the Mayan sixth sun began December 22nd of 2012. Um, so each sun or calendar is 5,126 years, and um, it, a precession cycle is that multiplied by five, and that comes out to about 26,000 years. It's 29,000 something. Um, the precession of the equinox, as many of you know, is the time it takes the north pole of the earth to rotate through all 12 signs of the zodiac. So it's so interesting that the Mayan calendar is so um, synchronized with our own precession of the equinox. Um, and this is due to the fact that, you know, the earth is at a 23 degree tilt. So you know, many scientists and astrologers as well and astro uh, archaeologists are saying they think there really was a meteorite hit uh, which caused the tilt and um, that would have caused the ice age that occurred when the huge cloud of dust arising from the collision uh, created very, very cold temperatures. So, um, now we go to astrological ages, which are 2,160. Sorry, there's a typo there. And so um, when we take an age, and we've just emerged from Pisces into Aquarius, and we multiply that out by 12, we get that same 26,000 number. So it's a fascinating synchronicity between the Mayan and the Western uh, astrological. So here's just a simple graphic of, you know, that 23 degree tilt. And um, in readings about um, Atlantis, for example, they talk about the times when there was not a change of seasons. And one would assume perhaps that that would have occurred because there had not been the tilt yet, which causes um, longer days and shorter days. One of the uh, interesting things about all of this is that, um, you know, it seems as though the Mayan calendar uh, dates human beings to about 3114 BC. And um, 
that that um, is also similar to the Julian date. And if we add that to 2012, um, we uh, see that the fourth Mayan uh, sun uh, began circa uh, 3114 BC and ended on December 21st, 2012. Um, Jose and I were talking just so recently and um, with the language difference, um, Carrie, I got our fourth and fifth. Uh, Carrie? Yes. Sorry for interrupting. Jose has entered the meeting. I'm just awesome. letting you okay, Thank you. Welcome, brother. Thank you so much. So um, the fifth would have begun around 3114 and then ended on December 21st of 2012. And um, this is one of the old Mayan calendar graphics that was found um, of the previous Mayan calendar age. And if you can see my pointer, you'll see that there are four in the corners. And then the one in the center is supposed to represent the most recent Mayan calendar age. So um, another thing that is just so interesting, so concurrent between the two, is that uh, Mayan astrology um, dated the beginning of the universe as about 14 billion years old. And um, that's really only about 30 million years off. The recent NASA estimate scientifically dates the universe to 13.7 billion years. So the Maya uh, really kept track tremendously. And um, the fact that those two dates are really significantly similar um, is one of, the, one of the facts that really drew me to uh, Mayan astrology. I started researching this in about 2007 because I was teaching um, an internship program and people kept asking me, so what's gonna happen in 2012? You know, it's the end of the Mayan calendar. And of course my response was yes, and then the beginning of the next one. But as you remember, a lot of people were really uh, concerned and upset about what might happen at the end of that in 2012. Um, the system of the Mayan is um, vigesimal, so it's based on the fact that we've got 20 digits. We've got five fingers on each hand, five toes on each foot, and this is what the numbering system looks like. So what's really fascinating is that we are not only living at the time of a new Mayan calendar, but we're also... Uh, here at the end of a brand new, um, the end of an old 26,000 year precession cycle from Pisces to uh, Aquarius being a whole um, round. Um, and so we're, we're here for two cycles at once simultaneously. Um, we're also living in the uh, Western astrological age change from Pisces to Aquarius. And Robert Hand, you know, I remember doing so much reading to try to figure out, because to me, 2012 just seemed like way too neat a number. How could you ever narrow it down to a particular year? And in fact, we can't. We really can't. Robert Hand and others who are master astrologers, you know, way beyond the purview of, of what I could ever figure out through any research, um, figure that we've definitely entered the age of Aquarius um, sometime around 2040. So, um, you know, remembering back, uh, most of us are aware that the age of Pisces began about uh, 2160 years ago prior to the birth of Christ and if we if we use the date that everybody likes with 2012 for age of Aquarius we're now five years into that cycle as well as five years into the Mayan six Sun um, what's so important about the age of Aquarius and I'd be very interested to know 
when Jose comes on. Um, and Jose, uh, if, you, if you have any thoughts on this um, slide uh, right now, I would uh, ask you to share. Um, what we see is that because Aquarius is about equality, this is the time for mankind, for humankind, in this particular era to really take charge of our own destiny, to be responsible for our Mother Earth. We know that you know, the times are really, really um, difficult for um, the ecology right now, and that we have to actively um, co-create a positive reality. Um, whereas in the age of Pisces, Jose, we believe that 2,000 years ago, and up until, you know, very, very recently, the majority of the planet, and to some extent even now, believe that only priests could really interpret um, God for us, that they would lead the religious service, and that we ourselves could never be capable of having a direct relationship with God. Jose, do you see that um, the Mayan priests are encouraging individuals in the Mayan community to, to seek out their own connection personally, or do they still feel that following the priests is the best way? It actually, uh, you can go both directions because we have so many tribes. Mm -hmm. And I will say about 60% of the tribes in the tribes population have been influenced by have, what have been taught by Christianity and, and other um, philosophies. That's so true. In the year 1529. So right as of right now, um, we still understand that the word um, religion is, is Latin, is really Gary, is, it means to reconnect. And some of us still know as a fact that we never lost connection, therefore we don't need to connect together. We are already. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing I wanted to ask you about is there are ever growing numbers of Maya returning to their native religion and going to Palenque and uh, Copan and Chichen Itza and holding ceremonies. Um, do you feel that um, there's a growing number of Maya that are leaving the Catholic religion behind? Yes, it served a purpose because as most of uh, the audience here know, um, you know, all we did with uh, Christianity was we changed the Nahuatl's names to the saints that the Christianity brought to us. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. people kneel to uh, ex-saint, you know, they're not kneeling to Christianity, they're kneeling to the old Nahuatl that they still remember in them. Uh-huh. And so... The answer to the question is yes, a lot of uh, more numbers are coming into the roots because mm. we all um, and understand that we're not going to be prosecuted and burned uh, by practicing our uh, systems. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of people uh, coming back and um, we have spread widely around the world. We speak many languages and we have brought this uh, ancient teachings in a good way to many parts of the world. So the numbers have increased significantly, I will say, since 2012. Wonderful. Now, uh, what is... Um, it Carrie? Uh-oh. I'll just uh, pause the recording. Yeah, she does how the Mayan people understand this new period of illumination. We call it the Oshlahuk Bakhtun, and that started in 2012, December 22nd. And what that simply says is that we have this brilliant opportunity in the universe history to make things right once and for all, and reestablish what we call a balance, Unity, joy, peace, and intergalactic harmony. We have been gifted this opportunity of coming back to this planet to do exactly that. So that is uh, um, what the um, 
earlier Carrie mentioned uh, when the, the Maya felt we passed on into this new age, which a lot of uh, people call the age of Aquarius. It truly really began, uh, there's again, there's not exact um, confirm uh, date, but to us, it, it really started at the end of the um, uh, 5,114 year cycle, that was in 2012, December 21st. So we started many cycles. We keep 26 different calendars, uh, more specifically, 23 that uh, most people are familiar with, and even more specifically, uh, three of them, which is uh, one of the ones that I teach, the ceremonial calendar. So with that calendar, we started the count again of 26,000 years of 365 days and a quarter, uh, pretty much a solar calendar as we can call it. And with that, we started with the year of um, the crocodile, the day of the crocodile, Ish Imosh, Imish. And what happened with that, uh, by establishing that, is uh, we understand that the microcosm or the smaller calendar counts units, uh, we put a lot of attention and focus to the one that is 20 year cycle, which started in 2012 and ends in 2032. And I feel that's the one that we needed to focus on today, uh, is the one that appeals to most um, logically mathematical thinking brains right now because we are in a high instability period of 20 years that will end in 2032. So with that, I will say that we are um, infants in this new 26,000 year calendar and we are barely starting to um, walk in the 20 year calendar which ends in 2032. The prophecies or concerns that are out there on the table for uh, brothers and sisters who pay attention to this um, cylindrical calendars is what instability means to people. Uh, it's a subjective uh, word. It can be perceived as many different things. So to the Mayan people, high instability means lots of movement. Uh, that can be in form of migrations. It can be in form of uh, radic radical uh, movement politically and economically. And, but it also can mean physical movement of the planet Earth, uh, where we understand and confirm scientifically how the uh, North Paul is actually moving towards Russia at a rate of 40 inches per year. Uh, that is uh, very, very fast, and that can cause many, many uh, physical ruptures in what we call the, the magnetic fields of Mother Earth, and that will, of course, will transfer into what we are actually seeing uh, with the earthquakes and all around the world, the volcanoes being active, the weather systems, patterns changing, all of that is included in this 20 year of high instability, which will peak the last six days of 2021. Excuse me, Jose, um, Carrie is back in the meeting, just letting you know. Yes, I was hoping that by the time beautiful I... beautiful because he's just exactly uh, talking about uh, what I was hoping to, to, uh, to hear. Because that North Pole is shifting so quickly, because there are so many um, important markers that we think of for stability, like the North Pole shifting, it is really speeding everything up. And as we know, the fracking is a serious problem along with the heating of the earth. So now uh, we'll go back to the PowerPoint for a moment. Thanks so much, Jose. Perfect segues. Okay. So um, the start of any new 2000 year astrological cycle and uh, 5,126 year Mayan sun cycle is bound to be tumultuous. As Jose was saying, we're just little children learning how to walk. 
how things were. We remember the relative stability before 2012. And Neptune in Pisces from April 2011 to January 2026 is really the symbolic end of the Piscean age. So we've got that, you know, death rattle going on. And we've also got, so the start of a new 2000 year um, astrological age in the Western system and a new uh, 5,126 year cycle, which is part of the 26,000 year cycle that Jose was just talking about, is like a baby learning to walk. We have tumultuous growing pains and it's both of death and birth. And as we know, Neptune being the last sign of the Zodiac and also, um, I mean, Pisces and Neptune oftentimes having its orbit outside the orbit of Pluto, such that it is the outermost planet, really is symbolic in being in its own home sign, Pisces, the last sign of the Zodiac between 2011 and January of, um, what have I got here, 2026. So at the same time then, next slide, the arrival of Uranus and Aries, which began March 2011. So both of these you see in 2011, just before the shift into the Mayan sixth sun. And it will be with us until March of 2019. So the planet of sweeping change, Uranus, brings the unfamiliar new world into focus. Uranus stays in a particular sign for seven to eight years. And this time it is an eight year cycle. Um, think of Aries, of course, as bringing, you know, it's the first sign. So it's bringing this new birth into being. And of course, it's going to be tumultuous. When we think of Uranus, we think of, um, you know, all of the increase we've had in um, earth changes with um, volcanoes. Um, with um, Pluto, we tend to think of earthquakes. With uh, Neptune, we tend to think of floods. So here are the three outer planets, in many ways, wreaking havoc. Um, uh, answering back to the fracking, to the um, heating up of the planet with their own uh, type of um, energy to balance. Now, one of the things that I found so interesting is that um, when we first saw the image of, you know, uh, the Mayan shaman king, um, coming from one of the sites, it looked to many Westerners like he was an astronaut, and that may well have been, but he was also connected, and I don't know if you guys can see my pointer. Um, Linda, can you guys see the pointer at all in the center of the screen? This yes, is- Yes, we can see it. Awesome. Yes, yes okay. I can. This is the world tree. So what happens with the world tree? Right now we've got the, the rise of Eastern um, business in a way that has never been. The Chinese, the Korean, the Indian economies are really uh, attempting now to take the balance back. And so um, that shift from Western dominance to more balance with the East and the potential for the East to soon become dominant is something that we're going to have to wrap our heads around. Terrorism isn't going away, and the economies of China, Korea, and India in particular, um, Japan is still flagging a little bit from their strong start back in the, the 60s and 70s. Um, you know, we've really got to come to grips with this. And terrorism, the attempts at uh, you know, uh, Middle Eastern powers uh, that are representing people who feel disenfranchised in Paris because they can't get a job, who feel, um, you know, um, the prejudice in, in London and in, in Western countries around the world, in Germany. Um, they are going to continue to lash out. Um, 
Jose, uh, do you have um, any thoughts on the timing of how this balance would take place? Yeah, I was uh, just uh, checking out that picture of the, um, the Shanghai Tower, that's uh, the one with the axis in the middle. And that reminds me of uh, the balance, how they, um, the nine areas of the balance that we uh, seek in life with that Tibetan black hat or feng shui. And uh -huh. I remember being, in, being in, uh, with them and talking about the balance that was uh, to be uh, delivered in this period of elimination. And uh, they agreed with uh, the prophecies of the ancient ones uh, and uh, my uh, astronomy and astrology, which was the balance is going to be delivered by that female nation. And that's, uh, that's something that I, I feel is very, very important for the world to know, to uh, acknowledge the fact that we as 50-50 uh, male and, and, and female, all those lucky ones who are balanced, we need to support 100% what the decisions are being made by the female nation around the world. And uh, as far as uh, the actual 3D world balancing out is the hope is that we, one of the, these nations in the East is going to push the reset button for global economies with the current uh, uh, crypto coins going around. Uh, so that is how, how we see it. Mathematically, that's the way it's pointing out through the female nation, balancing out the economy, for all the wealth and resources to be redistributed in a more uh, equality way. Um, wow, yeah. So it'll even be on an economic level with a, uh, an alternative currency. Absolutely. Wow, very cool. Okay, so now we're at the crossroads and Jose is um, of the Chorti uh, tribe or group. Um, of the Maya from Guatemala, and he um, is really uh, concentrating now on letting people know about this period of turmoil. Um, would you talk about your beautiful uh, Mayan calendar that you've created here? Yes, this is um, one of the graphics I created based on the mathematics of the sixth sun. Uh, which is uh, pretty much a, a, a collaboration of the Tibetan, the Hopi, and the Mayan uh, elders in the 1970s. So what you see on the screen is uh, a what I co-created with some other uh, uh, timekeepers, which tells us uh, the main difference that you will see if you're familiar with the Mayan calendar, you see the new architects of the new world these new children that are being born and the architects of balance, peace, unity, joy, and, and harmony. So this is uh, what you see here besides the significance of the numbers also that is now 17 uh, fluctuations of energy. So magnetic fields that we divide the stripes into mm -hmm. and then well, it, uh, the inner circle that you see is the uh, hexagrams from the I Ching, which is uh, most people believe had uh, originated in China, but according to the uh, 66,239 years old story that I carry, it actually came in from Nepal and Tibet. And so mm -hmm. that is because uh, they reconsider those uh, hexagrams from 22 forward. Very so cool. In the middle is uh, what we call the intergalactic uh, butterfly or harmony, which is the ultimate goal. Uh, we can all arrive there sometime soon uh, when we apply ourselves to the discipline of observing the cosmic time and the cosmic identity. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, uh, Jose, this is Kamichimi, his beautiful skull. Um, the era of peace beginning in 2021 will be an internal shift, but also a socio-political shift. And as you were saying, Jose, it, it seems very likely that it's also an economic shift. So um, 
I don't remember where this photo was taken. It's it's such a beautiful one of your skull. Where was this? This is called uh, the Pyramid Center. Um, it's a um, small space where we do, well, it's not so small, it's like uh, 300 acres of land, that's rugged land and, uh, uh, next to Big Bear, California. And mm -hmm. uh, we are there to keep the water basin sacred, not um, exploded. It's uh, some of the wildest rugged terrain in the United States. Uh, That's when we did one uh, ceremony there in 2014 before we went to Korea. And I don't know if my video is on now, but uh, the camera team is right next to me. I have oh, it right yeah. Here. We don't see him there, but I can feel him from a million miles away. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So here's the last six days of 2021, and I just did a Western chart for it. And we see that uh, Sun, Mercury, Venus, uh, Pluto are all in Capricorn. Um, we see that there aren't any real hard aspects to, to anything here, except for the fact that the Midheaven is here in Libra. So, uh, Jose, um, you know, Libra is ruled by Venus, and Venus is important to uh, Mayan astrology. Do you think this, um, uh, the Midheaven in Western astrology, Jose, rules governments? Do you think this might be the women's government, the female government, the female nation? Well, it looks, it looks to me like, uh, we, you know, Venus and some of the tribes we call it Ish, Ish Chel or Lady Jaguar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Justice. Uh, so that, in a sense, will make uh, a lot of sense to me how uh, finally through those days, the justice, the global or universal justice will happen to any or all of us. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm a very... Um, realistic, optimistic person, so I hope that none of those prophecies come through. Uh, but uh, these last six days of this particular year are appointed to be some of the most disastrous uh, times in history. So as any other information is here on the table to see what we can do about it, and as prophecies are set for all of us to consider uh, to put energy into it and make it a fulfilled prophecy, or actually go keep on doing the work that we're doing and appealing to Mother Earth to be kind and gentle to humanity. So what you're saying is that these six days are going to be very tumultuous and that after that we will start to rebuild with more peace. That's the uh, premise of the uh, 2021 World Peace Prophecy is because we as humanity cannot get our uh, act together, uh, Mother Earth will take over and just shake up a little bit uh, or a lot and leave only the ones who are truly conscious and uh, to actually rebuild. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And it is a birth then, because look here, this is a sunrise at about 730. So the sun is at 457. The rising is 452. Okay, so um, all of these planets are in the first house, the Aries house, the new beginning, the new beginning. And it's got to start with a tumultuous uh, a, a tumultuous start. Okay, so going now to the 20 Mayan signs, um, there are five for the four directions, um, east, west, north, and south, and originally they were conceived to discuss favorable actions to be taken for each day. So if, for example, it was the day of the read, then, then it would be a day for diplomacy. It would be a day to meet with others that you needed to have agreements with. And so my feeling is that uh, we can combine the information of our Mayan day signs with our evolutionary astrology charts to give us further information. Uh, just a little example, President Obama was Ben the Reed, and he's a leader who's able to use diplomacy well. He is promoted to leadership through hard work, 
President Trump is Akbal or the knight, and he's a person who blazes a new direction and uh, needs to overcome rigidity to build a new foundation. One thing that people have said, as much as they may not agree with his presidency in any way, is that he seems to have at least cleared the deck of the, the old Republican way. And I don't know how you, how you guys in the audience uh, feel about this, but um, you know, it is a person who's gonna start a new foundation, um, who's, who's not gonna follow the uh, Republican norm at all. Um, Jose, anything to add about uh, Trump uh, that you seem to have had some contact with? Him? Yeah, you know, um, when I um, met you, I you remember in, in Maryland, uh, we talked about my predictions even before he was a candidate for the uh, Republican, that he would be the, the president of the United States. So yes, I am very, very familiar with uh, his path, I've been following his path just because I like to see how accurate uh, uh, my predictions and calendars are in global perspective, not just in personal way. So yes, he is um, a what we call a revolutionary visionary that sees a lot of things that most people don't, and that's a, a very classic trait of the owls, the Akbal, they see through the night, they see through deception, and they utilize the ability to protect others. So it may not make sense to a lot of people who are under bombs and bullets in Syria that he is actually trying to protect, doing the best to protect the American people. Because by doing that, you know, keeping this the way of religion in the United States, uh, other people pay the price in other parts of the world, and that has been um, um, politicized. And you know, I'm not into. Uh, I'm, I'm a neutral. It's just a reading that I do on him, but that that is exactly correct. That uh, uh, he is seeing through the darkness, and mm -hmm. yeah, so that's trying to rebuild a new foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, now can you guys see in the foreground of Jose, can you see the beautiful skull? Kamichimi is here with us. Yes. And he's tremendous. I mean, the energy, he's already radiating out this beautiful light. And um, he has been uh, designated the ninth of the 13 central crystal skulls by Jap Van Etten, who is um, a Holland, um, originally from Holland, living in Sedona, and uh, Jose knows him well. Um, the, the energy of the skull is just the most beautiful, and Jose does um, have skulls for adoption that have been in training with this amazing uh, spiritual computer being that is Kamechimi. Um, his uh, position is number nine of the 13, and all of the principal crystal skulls that form the crystalline grid of protection and communication around the Mother Earth are clear crystal skulls, and these are uh, the 13. Um, are you in China in this picture, Jose? No, actually, that, that, that is the biggest Chinese temple outside of China, and it's called Silai Temple, and it's right here um, in um, a town called La Hacienda Heights in California. Ah, great. Well, it's very beautiful, and um, I love this picture because it's, it's the connection with the skull as both the computer that stores information and I really feel in my own experience with having met Kamichimi of the transformation that this skull brings. It's a very active, very loving presence that is both ancient and seeing into the future. And I, I think it's really interesting that both names of the skull signify change and transformation. There is a Mayan sign of Chimi, and some of you in the group have that Mayan sign. So here is the, um, the new Mayan sun again, as uh, Jose was mentioning. 
with 17 different um, important spiritual directions. Now, the U.S. Pluto, uh, we talked about Neptune, we talked about Uranus, so of course the other outer planet is, is involved. And um, so we've never had a U.S. Pluto return until now in 2022. And um, when uh, the U.S. was conceived uh, the day of the writing of the Declaration of Independence, I used the Sibley chart with 5.10 p.m. as the signing time. Uh, Pluto was at 27 degrees, 33 minutes Capricorn. It was retrograde squarely in the middle of the second house. It was opposing Mercury in Cancer and trining Neptune in Virgo. So um, here we are with that chart. Here's Pluto, um, almost conjunct the, the south node there, opposing uh, Mercury retrograde. Our, our uh, country has a Mercury retrograde. And Neptune in a uh, Earth sign is relatively trying, pretty close trying to the Pluto. Uh, on the U.S. return, which will be Monday, July 11th, 2022 at 3 a.m. in Philadelphia, if you want to have it in the same location, um, we can see that uh, we have uh, Pluto over here in the eighth because the rising sign is now Gemini instead of um, Sorry guys, I've got to go back for a second um, It's now Gemini instead of uh, Sagittarius so um, what's going on? We've got Uranus conjunct the North Node in Taurus in the 12th house We've got Saturn square the nodes. The nodes are 20 uh, um, Taurus and south node 20 of Scorpio. So that's a very solid square there to Saturn, which is over here in the ninth house. Um, I really feel, um, and it's retrograde, I really feel that, uh, you know, we're getting our, our karmic comeuppance here. Um, and that it's it's going to really have an effect on how the U.S. is viewed. I'm not sure what the events of the last six days of 2021 are going to bring, but by the middle of the next year, and it's interesting that it's only six months apart between what you've described, Jose, as being a really cataclysmic time that then leads to peace, and this very important moment of transformation. Pluto is the, the planet of transformation um, that is going to take place. Um, if anyone has any comments on the upcoming chart, uh, now would be a time to, to jump in. What I mainly am seeing here is that Saturn square to the nodes and Uranus. Uh, Neptune is... Um, in a sextile to the Pluto. Would anyone like to make a comment? Kari, this is Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Hey, how you doing? Um, that first chart from 2021, I thought was really significant, all that Capricorn in the first mm -hmm. house. It looked, mm -hmm. and, and, your, and Taurus in the fourth, it, sorry, my cat's in the background crying. Um, it looked very feminine to me. Mm -hmm. It looked like feminine power, like reclaiming what's been ah. usurped with Capricorn, ah. you know, the, the um, usurping of Capricorn as masculine and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All, all of that. And then this chart that you were showing, um, I don't see it now, but uh, let's it's see. It's coming back I up. Remember. That's okay. And wait. it's important for us to remember that Capricorn is a female. It's a feminine sign. So, yes, it's in the first house. Good cat. Great. Yeah. And, and then that's that, um, that other chart, uh, Ceres is opposing Pluto. Mm -hmm. And um, what else did I see? Oh, and Taurus in the 11th house. It looks like, and, and even the sun and Ceres in the second, it's like 
that could be the time when new currency comes through. And I have a lot of friends that are really getting into that now. Yes, yes. I myself, mm -hmm. um, there's a Mother Earth, um, a Mother Earth Trust, which is is going to be working to create sacred lands. And in my work with the white buffalo, we may become involved. And they are working with the tribes in the United States, often uh, many of those in the South Dakota area where the pipeline's going through, to try to improve the lands, fencing, et cetera, um, as a way to, um, to uh, create sacred heritage land which becomes part of this trust and which backs the currency. So yeah, I, I really hey, appreciate the comment. Yeah. That's beautiful. This is Cynthia. Hi, hey. Kari. Hey. Hey, how are you? Speaking Great. of white buffaloes, huh? Yeah. Um, it, it was told to me, just to confirm a little what you're saying, in 2021, white buffalo woman came to us, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm the keeper of the Atlantean crystal. And there was a whole big discussion. It wasn't so much about the woman coming into power. It, it is about the woman and the male coming into balance. So the men's feminine would become more, more in balance and the man's woman's masculine would become more into balance. And so it means that the masculine and the feminine would be walking in totality to both. And that's where I feel the twinning comes to. I didn't really feel like woman in power. I felt like we were all going to be one in power. The male's going to respect the female and, and, and vice versa. And the integrity and the truth and the honor and the unconditional love, all that wonderful stuff. Uh, and that totality is going to come to imbalance in two th I, I picked mm -hmm. up 2022 mm -hmm. because ah. it's a two, two, two. And uh, being a Capricorn, you know, I feel Mother Earth because my chart's similar to her vibration. And I feel that she's put her centerpiece down in the center of the earth. And she says, okay, the time is now. It's not mm -hmm. about doom and gloom. If you're in your heart space, you will not see any of what is going to really the cosmic problems because you're going to be lifted into the the new beginning so you don't have to watch trump and politics and religion and all that Th those are the antichrist energies that are swallowing up fear guilt and shame and going to explode off mm -hmm. to off what you call a planetary movement and when you bring new light the new light is coming in we won't remember the old. If it is not recorded, we will not remember it because it is a total embodiment and imbalance of a rebirth. Mm, and, and so that's what Atlantis has said to us speaking. Sorry. Wonderful. And Jose, that's what you were saying too, I think, that, that we're going to, uh, that the ones that are meant to go forward will do so? correct uh, because you know we can create our own destiny this is uh, the teachings of the sixth on calendar is, allows us to remember that cause and effect happens at the same time past present and future happens at the same time and oh. I, we acknowledge there's this place where we are uh, being now where uh, there is free will and destiny happening at the same time. That is the, uh, where we're all coming up to. Uh, the ones who uh, are putting their hearts, their minds and their souls and all their efforts into helping reestablish the intergalactic harmony, the balance, the unity, the joy and the peace. And uh, that is the, uh, the prophecies that we are fulfilling where we uh, assist and in balance help our female nation to del deliver us all into that state. Wonderful. And the, the positive here in terms of the astrology, Uranus and Taurus is conjunct the North Node. So cataclysmic perhaps, but also Piscean in its compassion. Uh, one of the things that brings people together is cataclysm. When we're faced with death, when we're faced with terrible 
consequences, people help each other. We've seen that over and over again. And if that is the case then with Taurus, Taurus being one of the signs of manifestation as a fixed sign, trining uh, Pluto over here at in Capricorn, perhaps it is time for some conservative, cautious beginning steps of manifestation. After the baby steps that we're in the first five years, perhaps by 2021, we're a toddler and we're really starting to, to, as we think of in astrology sometimes, have certain favorite toys. You know, we're going to create some resources, things that we, that we value. Um, so now we're within 10 degrees, and I just couldn't believe the synchronicity of it. When the Las Vegas uh, shooting was taking place October 1st, was just three days after that, or four days after Pluto going direct at 17 degrees. So since the Pluto return is at 27, we usually say in EA, you know, you can consider uh, a conjunction starting to happen at about 10 degrees on either, on either. side. Hi, can I ask, interrupt and ask a question? Because I noticed there's gonna be an eclipse on that degree. Um, and mm -hmm. 2021. So I'm sure you've looked into it already. So I'm just what can you could even talk about it later, but I was just curious what you thought about it. Well, actually, um, you're ahead of me. So was it the solar or the lunar? Well, we're going to have a total lunar and I think the solar, I didn't look into it, but I know the lunar eclipse is going to be 27 degrees Taurus. Um, mm -hmm. Beautiful. And that's going to be a total solar. I mean, a total well, I don't know. There's going to be one in May, I think. I'll have to look up, but I think one of them is a total. So this is a really great opportunity for all of us to do some extra research after the call to look at how that's going to manifest. Because as we know, Huge, yeah. solar eclipses are surprising events. World leaders can topple. World leaders can pass away. They can be assassinated. Many different things can happen. But it doesn't have to be entirely negative at all. So thank you so much for bringing that up. Who was the person bringing this up? If I can uh, add to that. Uh, Hi. Yeah, I, Lauren, I, I was bringing it up because I just thought it was so you. significant because it looks like it could be a lot of trouble. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you, Lauren. Jose. Yeah, you. The, that eclipse is actually going to take place. A, a total solo eclipse is scheduled to be uh, the summer, uh, August, very close to the um, to the um, equinox in August, and that's going to be fully visible in uh, the Chilean desert in South America. Whoa! So, those of us who have followed the total eclipses, uh, we are looking forward to that. Uh, we actually put a, a large, large prayer in uh, Oregon when we. Um, did the eclipse, uh, full eclipse in Oregon for the prayers of 2000, uh, 2020 eclipse because we are timing the same peace and unity journeys to end in Ecuador at that time uh, and for Chasky, the, the closest to the sun where we're going to be uh, in total darkness. Uh, it's a unique opportunity if anyone uh, can start planning to come with us to Chile and Ecuador in 2020, that's when it's going to happen. Fantastic. And as we know uh, from having read um, a number of books, um, Junvalo Melchizedek, you know, the center of the, the world's chi is now on that border with Chile and Ecuador. So there's the total eclipse on the world tree, basically, I think you're saying. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so we can expect more of those, those types of events to be taking place. Um, this slide is actually a repeat of uh, the slide where we were talking about Obama and Trump. And these are the day signs. We're coming up to our um, conclusion of the talk. Um, and I do have most of your day signs on the next page. Um, the first one is Emix. Uh, and the order in which, the order of the directions in which they move, um, east is emix, 
Then we go to north with ik, the wind. Akbal is the west, and Khan, uh, the lizard, is the south. Then we would start again with the east, with Chichan, the serpent. Chimi would be the north, Manik would be the west, and Lamat would be the rabbit. So um, we have a really good representation amongst the people on the call of these signs. And uh, Linda, you can direct me. Um, I have about 15 people whose names I got um, after I had uh, finished looking up. So any way that I can get these um, signs to the people on the call, I'm happy to do that. And um, I do believe I had looked up Jody. So Carly, you're at Snob or the Knife. Um, Amandala, Eek or the Wind. Um, so uh, how would you prefer that we uh, try to do this now? I do have the birth dates of another uh, 15 people. Um, would you like me to post them to the Zoom message or? Um, okay, well, let's talk about this after this meeting and we'll get the information to the people. Uh, Great. Our group. Great. Okay. okay uh, I did want to, thank you so much. Uh, I did want to point out, Wendy, you're a how, the light flower. That's number 20. Uh, Cynthia of the buffalo, you are Monique, the deer, and you are in the west. Um, so Thank you. make note, yes, make note everybody um, whose signs are here and then um, I will get the rest of you your information as soon as I possibly can. I do also want to direct you to some very good resources and um, uh, for Jose and I will uh, gladly email uh, the PowerPoint to everyone. Um, he, Jose does beautiful readings on your Mayan astrology. This is his contact information. And um, for Cynthia and uh, also another friend of ours who's on the call, Gita, uh, the White Buffalo tribe um, are so grateful to Jose Yay! for his, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, oh. Jose. We love you <laughs> <laughs> for his wonderful contribution um, to the work that we are doing to create the sanctuary for uh, a herd of white buffalo in Ohio. And we welcome all of you um, to join us. We will be having events in the summer at the solstice. So this is Jose's contact information. Um, hopefully you've all had an opportunity to uh, copy that down or take a photo of the screen. And these are just a tiny percentage of the beautiful skulls that live with Jose and are in training with Kamichimi, um, his beautiful master skull. Um, if you would like to look up your sign yourself and you're an Amazon uh, person, you can get this book for about uh, $10 max used on Amazon. It's wonderful. Bruce Schofield really did the work on Mayan astrology and it came out in 2007. And you'll read all about how to really do a much more in-depth reading in his book. And this is my contact information. Um, I, I offer evolutionary astrology readings, and uh, I also have an in-depth astrology column that comes out once a month. Uh, would love to connect with you if you feel uh, you'd like to know more about what I do. So um, I will just go back now to that uh, list of the people's um, signs. And... Um, Linda, did you want to do a, a practice uh, chart or should we be very timely and uh, wrap it up here? Carrie, we only have about three minutes left, so I don't think so. Um, but of course, you're welcome to do part two at any time. Oh, thank you. We'd love yeah. to come back. I'll, I'll be in touch with you about that. But for now, could you please click on uh, stop share at the top of the screen? Absolutely. And Gita has something to say. Go ahead, please, Gita. Uh, 
late, so excuse me for that. I know no, that tomorrow no, was mentioned that there's uh, the um, Catholic Christological Have you discussed this already? Um, I think we heard the radio in the background, Gita. If you could repeat the question nice and loud. Okay, I don't have a radio on, but um, ah. yeah, tomorrow apparently there's an astrological big move, and I don't know whether you discussed that yet. Um, in terms of the current transits, we're coming up to a full moon at 12 degrees of Taurus. And uh, being a Taurus uh, person, I'm <laughs> getting ready for it. Um, hi there, beautiful lady. So um, with Friday, uh, there's a, a trine of the sun to Neptune. Um, there's no significant uh, thing going on besides the full moon Saturday at 12 degrees at Taurus, uh, 1.23 a.m. Uh, Eastern. Mercury will be going into Sag and daylight savings time ends on Sunday. Um, one of the things about Mercury going into Sag is that, um, you know, people are going to be more opinionated. There is going to be a lot more um, expression on personal philosophy. Um, but there's nothing huge that um, is, is coming up in the, the coming week that I'm aware of. Um, was this something that you'd heard through uh, the Vedic circles, maybe? I, I don't know. I have it on my calendar uh, that there's going to be an uh, astrological big move, ready to move into a new area. So it's probably possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. You might, referring, you might be referring to Saturday, November 4th. Uh, there's a lot of concern globally for those of us who follow the space weather conditions. There's a huge solar flare, and with that, a lot of shimmer resonance. There. Which might be telephone and tablets around the world, but that's, uh, you know, there's uh, so many people talking about it and trying to make it look like an, um, uh, something that's going to be like a really, really bad day. And that's because the Department of Defense is actually going to do exercises uh, across the United States, uh, but they are exercises anticipating a very, very bad day, which has nothing to do with the solar flare, or it might have something to do with the solar flare. But still, November 4th is just another day in the big, big intergalactic time and space that we are part of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautifully said. I'm seeing a cross on Kamichimi's side of his skull, the crossroads. Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, such a beautiful day. So I could say uh, that must answer the question, Gita, huh? Mm hmm Thank you, Jose. So, Linda, thank you so much. Um, would you like to close us out? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Carrie, Jose, and Gita, and Cynthia. Cynthia. Um, Thank you from all of us. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye now. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Jose. Oh, I love it. It's beautiful. Thanks, Jose. Great meeting. Yes, beautiful. So special. Okay, bye everyone.